close but no cigar. The Leafs are down 5-0 in the second period. I'm ready to do this video just about then. They score one late, and I'm like, well, I'll watch the first, like, 10 minutes of the second, uh, the third period. We'll see what happens, and then I'll just come and do the video anyways. The Leafs start scoring goals in the third period, and they make it a 5-4 game, but they lose. 5-4. It wouldn't be a Toronto sports team if they get close, but they lose. Like the Blue Jays. I'm going to go way back now. A couple years. Well, <laughs> way back now. Uh, 2015, Kansas City Royals. They had first and third, nobody out. Chance to tie the game, you know, or, or go ahead in extra innings. You don't score a run. Close, but you lose. You know? And uh, the Leafs in overtime against the Washington Capitals. Could have forced game seven. Lost in overtime. Close, but you lose. Game 7, twice against the Boston Bruins. You have the lead going into the third both times. Close, but you lose. The story of the game today, and it's been the, really the story of the last half, like month or two for this team. The inability to start on time. These guys are curled up in bed still at 7 o'clock puck drop. They don't play until the second period. Look, I know a great comeback. They look great in the second and third period. Yeah, because you're already down 4 nothing. There's no competition at that point. You know, and, it, and then, then they make it 5 nothing. just that insult to injury there midway through the second. And it's like, it, it's embarrassing. Frederick Anderson, for the second game in a row, gets yanked. Can you blame him for this? Um, I want to blame him for which goal was that? The Brandon Perlini goal... Uh, the first one was deflected in by whom? William Nylander, of course, in front of the net. And it went five hole on Frederick Anderson. Just squeaks over the line. And the other ones were odd man breaks. I don't know. Cone and, and, and Sad or Sad. I'm, like, I'm so lost right now. One of them was a two on one. One was a breakaway. Or maybe the Alex break goal was a, a, a two on one. I don't know. So many defensive breakdowns. And I'm not just talking about Marinson, Ozaganov. Riley, Zaitsev, Hainsey, Muzzin. I'm not just talking about those guys. I'm talking about the entire team. On the on the on the two on one goal, or which way on the Patrick Kane goal, so the the third goal of the game. Turn over the blue line because John Tavares is trying to stick a stick handle around somebody at the blue line. He gets it taken away from him, and the two on one comes down the other way, and they score. Taking care of the puck, and if you're going to screw around at the blue line, make sure you're going to do it. You make sure you're either going to get it or someone's there to support you. Because if not, you'll look silly. And people are just leaving Frederick Anderson out to dry as well. The Leafs in the first, the third period, the shots were 30 to 11. The Leafs had 30 shots in the third period. 30! You see that in an entire game, let alone a period. But it could, the combined first and second period, they have a total of 20, which is actually normal. But you have nine shots in the first period. You got 14 shots. And the amount of quality opportunities you gave up was ridiculous. And offensively, you were nowhere to be found. Absolutely nowhere to be found. And I don't know why the heck Corey Crawford left the game in the second period. Um, did he leave the game with an injury or something? Oh, illness. Well, there you go. So it's going around everybody right now. Leafs have Hyman out tonight because of because of illness. And they bring in Dilly and the Leafs actually score three goals. Yeah, but he faced all 30 shots in the third period. And then the scramble's late. You know, I mean, my goodness. The, 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 the what? The 5-1 goal is Andreas Johnson tip from Morgan Riley. But at that point, we're all just like, hey! Because he scored a goal. It doesn't really matter. You know, in the third period, it takes still, still 13 minutes to go. It's under 13. Austin Matthews just banks one off of... Uh, what is it? Dylan Strom in front of the net. Didn't really matter. Still a 5-2 game halfway through the third. He still doesn't need three goals. I mean, it's ridiculous. But then you get a power play and we're like, huh, you score on this. You still have about nine minutes to play with two goals down. That's doable. And Morgan Riley scores a power play goal and we're like, wow, it's actually a 5-3 game. This is really close. And then with a minute and a half, John Tavares scores his career, his career high 39th goal of the year with a minute 31 to go. And we're like, this is not over yet. And the Leafs start peppering shots at the goalie, just peppering, peppering, peppering at crazy. And look what happens late in the third period to give them that face-off with 19 seconds left. 
Goaltender slides over to get to the post. I'm not saying he knocked it off on purpose because he didn't really go into it that hard, but boop. Net just pops off. Boop. You usually, sometimes it usually takes a whole body running right through the net to knock the net off. Not a goalie just trying to take his position. But that's the way it was going, right? When you put yourself in that big of a hole, you don't expect to get every single bounce the rest of the way. The Leafs also hit a couple posts in the game. Riley hit a post that could have tied the game. Or no, sorry, it was, it was before Tavares tied the game, but it was in that span. You know, and then I think Nylander ripped one off the iron. And Nylander tipped in Marincin in point shot that just missed wide. When you're down 5 nothing, I understand if you play a great rest of the game. When you're down that big, I don't care who you're facing. This team is one of the worst defensive teams in the league, are the Blackhawks. But they can score at will. I don't care what team you're facing. You could be facing the Buffalo Sabres of a few... You could be facing the Avalanche from a few years ago. It doesn't matter. You're down 5 nothing. You're usually going to lose those games. And I give credit to the Leafs for fighting in the third period and making that fight. But they did not deserve two points because they did not play a full 40 minutes. Maybe 35 minutes? No, sorry, not even that. Maybe 25 minutes? The final five minutes of the second period and the rest of the third period? That's great and all. But you were down 5 nothing at that point. You can't win a game like that. We saw it against Tampa. You go down 4 nothing against a really good team in all aspects of the game. You score one late in the second period, like you saw today. But the difference is, they're a, Tampa's a much better team defensively and in net. So they just shut the Leafs down the rest of the way. And as the Blackhawks are a terrible team defensively, and goaltending-wise, because they had to pull Corey Crawford. Dealey is ridiculously horrendous in net, but he somehow finds a way to make some desperation, sprawling Garrett Sparks types of saves late in the third period. But that's what happens, again, when you put yourself in that hole. In the first periods, in the last two games... Actually, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me re rephrase that. In the last two games, the first time the Leafs score in that game... They are trailing by at least four goals. You score a 4-1 goal against Tampa. Great. You end up losing 6-2. And yeah, you got this game close 5-4, but you were down 5-0. Well, you got one and made it a 5-1 game. You can't let that happen. The next game for the Leafs is home against the Flyers. And the even worst thing about these last two games, they're at home. And going into those games, the Leafs had like a four or five game win streak at Scotiabank Arena. And then they played those two snot fests of a game. I just don't... I, 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 you can't blame Freddie because the team in front of him ain't playing for snot. They're, they're playing terrible out there. Look, I hate Marinson. Well, uh, with all due respect, I hate the guy. Sorry. Hate the player. Don't hate the guy personally. I don't know the guy personally. I can't say that. But the rest of the team has been terrible. In the first period. Smarten up. Start on time. Get those legs going early. Instead of when you're down by three, four, five goals. Because against Boston in the playoffs. You won't get a chance to come back like you did today. By the way. The Bruins had lost two straight games. For the first. They lost for one, one game in regulation. In like 18 they were on a point streak of like 18 games. They lose two straight regular regulation games. This is the Leafs' chance to get back into it and tie them and then get that home ice advantage. Nope, you, get, you lose 5-4 on this ridiculous game today and then you lose 6-2 to Tampa. So those games that you had that you could have got right back into that race, in the Tampa game I understand because that's a really good team over there. Ideally, the Leafs are supposed to be a really good team, but that team in Tampa is just on the next level. But tonight... Man, we wanted those two points. After seeing Boston give up a seven spot to Columbus yesterday, you wanted to get these two points and get that much closer. But instead, you gain no ground and you're still four points back with no games in hand. And the clock is just ticking now. Now, the, now another issue for the Leafs is there's only 12 games left of the season and they just played two stinkers. You gotta start playing better. The clock is ticking. In the final five, six games of the year, you want this team locked down solid. But are they? I mean, my, my goodness. Jake Gardner's still injured. We don't know what the heck's going on with him. Dermot, we heard out at least four weeks, and that was what, like a week and a half, two weeks ago, maybe? 
Well, at least I hope it is. And then Kasperi Kapan hasn't played the last two games because of concussion. And Zach Hyman, who was a game time decision against Tampa due to the due to the flu or whatever the heck's going around, he doesn't play today. Now he'll probably be back in the next game. Hopefully, I don't know what that's. I don't know how he's feeling. Hoping he's back in the next game. Because Philadelphia, look, a team like Chicago tonight, that's a team clawing for their playoff lives. They looked like it in the early goings. The Leafs did not. You play on a Friday against, uh, where, who is it? Uh, the Philadelphia Flyers. A team crawling and fighting for the final playoff spot. They're five points out right now, but there's only Montreal and Columbus ahead of them. And Philly has been playing uh, pretty good hockey. They've won two straight. They're 6-3 and one in the last 10 games. They're going to come out flying. I don't care if you're at home. Brian Elliott and Frederick Anderson are the expected star. Or I guess uh, it says here Elliott's confirmed. Uh, Anderson is the expected starter. He has to play better. That Perlini goal that they scored, it was just a shot from the point that he just missed on. I mean, that's just not Frederick Anderson. And even on the deflection from Nylander, I would have loved him to squeeze that, but it's tough. I'm not going to blame him for it. Garrett Sparks went in there and did a great job. Give up one goal in the two periods that he played. Fine by me. He kept this team in the game. You could argue say, well, if he didn't give up the one goal, it, it was an on-man rush. It was a two-on-one against. So the Leafs getting caught on a break again. It's been happening all game. Turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. It's a problem. Apple, strawberry, cherry, I don't care. They're all turnovers for the Leafs. They gotta have a better start on Friday against Philly if they want to win that game. I don't care how bad that team is in net. Brian, what's his record? Brian Elliott. Oh, he's actually been playing pretty well. 916 save percentage and 259 goals against. He's been playing some great hockey. They have some good goaltending right now. They're clawing into the playoff spot. Race, I guess. They're gonna come out flying. Question is, are the Leafs? I don't know. All right, so you know what, guys? That's going to do it for this one. You guys enjoy this Rage video and uh, enjoyed the third period of the game today because it was entertaining. Hit that like button. I do appreciate that. Hit the subscribe button if you guys have not already. I thought I was going to shave today and it was going to be just fine and the Leafs would have come out with a victory. I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's working. It's work No, it really didn't work. Uh, comment down below, guys. What do you think of the game today? What do you think of the Leafs fight in the third? What do you think of the Leafs 60 minutes and uh, how they perform today overall? That's for you guys to go nuts in the comments below. And please, I don't want to hear about uh, Boston and four Boston... We're not there yet, people. There's still 12 games left, all right? Let's just get through these first before we start talking about that kind of stuff, all right? So uh, uh, Evan and I will talk to you guys. Podcast edition will be Saturday afternoon, all right? So links are in the description for the podcast channel and for the podcast itself on iTunes. Twitter is also down below. Follow up, send me a DM, do all that great stuff. And I will talk to you guys. Jay's edition will be tomorrow afternoon as we'll be talking about the Jay's week. They've lost a couple of games in a row, but some positive, thing to talk, positive things to talk about from those two games. All right, but as, the, as of the week, the, Leafs, the, the, the Jays have been very, very good uh, so far in the spring. We'll talk about that tomorrow afternoon. As for the uh, Toronto Raptors, they get, they get back in action tomorrow night as they welcome LeBron James to Scotiabank Arena and the Raptors looking to get back into the win column after that horrendous performance on uh, what was that? On on Monday night against the Cleveland Cavaliers in Cleveland, they gotta play better. I don't care what the Lakers look like; they have LeBron James and Raptor fans. We know him oh so well. All right. So, and as for the Toronto Maple Leafs, guys, like we said, they will take on the Philadelphia Flyers on Friday night. A very rare Friday night affair between the Leafs and Flyers. Brian Elliott, Frederick Anderson are the expected starters in that game. Freddie. Can we get 60 minutes out of you? And can we get a solid performance out of you? That would be spectacular because uh, we need Garrett Sparks for the Saturday night game against Ottawa in Ottawa. All right, so 7 o'clock puck drop there at Scotiabank Arena on Friday night. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you guys then.